What's going on coders? Welcome back to this Python 3 channel. In this video, we're going to look at how we can use the Binance REST API. Now, the main goals of this video would be to dynamically get all of the symbols uh, that currently exist in uh, Binance. So I think there is around 1,700 1, uh, symbols at the moment. So we're going to acquire these dynamically. And the way that we can do that is by hitting this uh, exchange info endpoint. And then what we're going to do is to um, filter out those symbols so that we only get symbols that uh, are versus the US dollar. So we'll look at the Bitcoin price, for example, versus the US dollar. We'll look at uh, Ethereum versus the US dollar, that type of situation. But we won't actually be looking at symbols um, which are coin uh, versus another coin in terms of pricing. So we're going to acquire those uh, those symbols. We're going to uh, use Python uh, thread the thread pool in Python to to do this. So we can we can uh, sort of do it concurrently, and uh, we're also going to time how long this takes. Now the uh, exchange info endpoint and the ticker pricing endpoint are are these. Um, these can be found in this documentation up here. The documentation is on GitHub, and I will put it in the in the um, below the video description so that you can uh, check it out yourself. There is many other endpoints that we can utilize, but these are the main ones that can help us achieve this this goal right here. So let's uh, get started. The way that we're going to do this video is we're going to actually do something different to prior videos. We're going to do some uh, pseudocode before we actually get started. So let's see how that might look. First off, I think we're going to need, uh, you know, an entry point to our uh, app. Okay, and then uh, we're probably going to need a function to get the exchange info and then uh, and then filter the symbols. So we'll do that. So we'll have a func to get symbols and filter. And then uh, potentially we're going to have another function to func to get price per symbol. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be good. So with this outline, let's uh, get started. So first, we're going to have uh, um, our name entry, if this is main, right. Um, so this is our start of uh, the start of our app. And what are we going to do here? Here, I think what we'll do is we'll define a list. So we'll do coin to US dollar pairs, right, because we want to be getting the US dollar uh, per each coin. And these are the sort of pairs BTC USD, this is a single pair or a single symbol. So we'll have this uh, empty list here. And then we will determine if this list is empty at the moment, then we can proceed with with doing uh, the rest of our actions in here. So what we'll do is if not coin to US dollar pairs, i.e. if coin to US dollar pairs is false, and it would only be false uh, if it's empty, otherwise it would be true. So if it is false, then we're going to say coin to US dollar pairs. And then we'll say, we'll call the function that actually gets our symbols and filters them. So let's let's call this function get coin to US dollar pairs, like so. And then what we'll do is we'll take this, copy it. And we're going to say define. And this will be our function. And then within this function, we can just say pairs. So we're going to uh, create an empty list. And then we can uh, create the URL, the URL endpoint. And in order for us to get the URL endpoint, uh, we can just look at the 1A in the task list up here. We grab this exchange info endpoint. We'll put it in quotes like that. And then um, actually, we'll need to go back here and, and import the requests. 
So we're going to use the request library to uh, hit those endpoints. And then what we'll do is we'll say response and then requests get and the URL. So essentially we'll store uh, the response to, uh, the response to our get request within the response variable and then what we can do is say for uh, each pair in response.json so we need to convert it to json because otherwise um, or, or we need to get the json response the json part of the response and what we'll do here is we'll say uh, symbols. So we want to get only the symbols tree within our JSON formatted response. And within symbols, we'll then uh, need to filter. So as I said, there is around 1,700 uh, symbols in uh, the Binance uh, API. So what we need to do is we need to filter based on US dollar. And the way that we could do this is say if US dollar, right, is equal to pair. So we're, we're pointing to this individual pair that we're looking at right now. And the symbol within that, right, and if it ends, in US dollar, i.e. if it ends on this US dollar string, then we're going to append this pair symbol like that. And what essentially this will do is we're going to load up all of the uh, coin to US dollar symbols into this uh, pairs list. And once we've done this, we can just do a return pairs. All right, so once we've done all of this, what we can now do is come back down here and say that uh, actually we want to print out to our console, we want to print out uh, the result of this. So we'll say uh, coin to US dollar pairs. So those pairs will get loaded into this uh, list and then we want to print out the list to see what what kind of uh, pairs we've uh, acquired all right so let's run this and make sure that it works this is obviously taking a second because we're hitting this exchange info endpoint and we're performing this operation on filtering out um, of the symbols which end in us dollar so we can clearly see in here uh, that we've got uh, Bitcoin USD, Ethereum USD, um, and various other, I think this is LTC is Litecoin. So we've got all of these symbols, uh, quite a few of them. And uh, now we can safely proceed on to the next part of our application, where we want to actually get the pricing per each symbol to US dollar. So Let's see how we can do this. Um, so we've got this function get price per symbol. So let's do this first. So what we'll do is we'll say uh, define get price, I think, and that will take a symbol. And then uh, in here, what we'll do is we'll define the URL where we get the symbols. So if we look at our uh, trusty plan here, we can copy this uh, pricing endpoint we put it in here. And then uh, as we are taking symbol, we want to actually pass this to the URL so that each URL will have a, a new symbol in it. So we're, we're going to hit the API get get the ticker pricing for this symbol at this very moment. And then we'll again do response um, requests get URL. So we're getting this uh, request. And uh, then what we'll do is uh, we won't actually return anything. Uh, we'll, what we'll do is we'll just print out this uh, response, this JSON, and the response here. All right. So now we have the get price function, and now what we have to do is really map each entry from our coins to US dollar pairs into this function. Uh, to get this sorted. Now we could do this individually. Um, so like we can call the function individually, but that doesn't seem like uh, such a such a good way to go about it. We 
could do uh, thread pools instead because what that will allow us to do is actually have um, sort of concurrent or what appears like concurrent connections to the API as we wait for, for each response. So theoretically, it should actually take less time to do it this way. So um, what we'll now do is uh, we'll do another import. So we'll import concurrent futures. And uh, as we see 0.5, we want to time how long this is going to take. So we'll do import time. All right, so now that we have concurrent futures imported, uh, what we could do is um, actually let's let's do the timing first, I think. So let's say we're going to say start time is equal to time dot time. All right, and then we're going to say duration is equal to time dot time. I get the current time minus the start time. OK. And that's going to be our duration. That's how long it's uh, it's actually going to take. And then finally, what we could do is we're going to print out um, acquired, and then we're going to say uh, the length of the coin pairs. Okay, so we're going to find out how many uh, actually uh, coin pairs with with uh, downloaded from the API. And then we're going to say duration like that uh, seconds. Yeah, so I think this will do it. So now we've got the timing in place. And now the only thing that's left is really to to use our thread pools uh, to actually map out each coin to US dollar pair or each symbol to uh, the pricing function or get price function. So let's do that. And we're going to say with concurrent uh, futures, I'm going to say thread pool executor. All right. And then we need to pass in how many uh, workers we want in here. So I'm just going to say 10, I think, or let's say eight. Uh, I think this is a dual core virtual machine. So let's just, you know, not uh, go overboard. So we're going to say eight. And we're going to say as executor. All right. And then uh, within executor, we can map. Uh, the get price function, and then we can uh, map an iterable in here as uh, as Visual Studio Code is suggesting, and we're going to say coin to US dollar pairs, like that. And I think this is going to be it. So let's uh, do a little clear here, and we're just going to run this program again. Uh, so we're going to acquire the uh, symbols, we're going to filter them, then we're going to go into the ticker pricing for each symbol. And we're going to print all of that, uh, that responses uh, that response out. And we're going to do this via the thread pool executor. So let us run this. And I suspect this is going to take uh, some time. So first, uh, obviously, we make we make this, uh, this call to the exchange info. And uh, that does take some time because there's literally 1700 symbols. So we filter those out. And we can see that we've got the response now and we, it's all filtered out. And now it's really about uh, getting this uh, thread pool executor with the eight workers and getting those those uh, functions started against the US dollar pairs. And we can see that the first kind of responses are coming out. Uh, we can see, uh, you know, wave to US dollar $220. Uh, we can see uh, Binance, the Binance coin is currently $516, Ethereum $4,300 at the moment, Bitcoin $61,000, and this will continue executing essentially until um, we actually get uh, all of the symbols out of the way. So yeah, this, uh, this is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, I certainly enjoyed making it. If you have any questions around the code, uh, please leave them down in the comments below. If uh, you would like me to do any more tutorials on uh, API usage or anything related to crypto, do also let me know. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.